Greetings, brothers and sisters of the Remnant Church. I'm Brother Elvin Bridges, once again of Living Manna Ministries, and we welcome you all back to our webinar series this week, of course, entitled Out of the Cities, the Threequel, An Appeal to Parents to Leave the City. This is our third night, night number three, and our topic title for this evening is Stepping Stones, Renting Your First Country Property. Stepping Stones, Renting Your First Country Property. Now, of course, we love to accept the counsel and admonition and teaching of the Lord and the spirit of prophecy. We like to always do that in terms of our, our, our counsel and leaving the city and going to our country destination. But you may be thinking, is there something in the Bible? Is there anything here in the word of God where someone is actually renting a property? Well, the answer actually is yes. It's not a very well-known issue not talked about or discussed much in Adventist circles, but there is a character, there is a brother in the Bible who actually rented a home. Let's go to the Bible. Actually, in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 28, our dear brother Paul actually was in a situation, a scenario, circumstance, where he actually was renting a home. Acts chapter 28 and verse number 30. Heavenly Father, please bless and anoint these words. Please. These are words of truth and life. We thank you, we love you, and we ask it as always. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Acts 28 and verse 30. And Paul dwelt two whole years, how long? Two whole years in his own hired house. Did you get the lesson? Not his purchased house, but his hired house. That means, of course, in the original language, he was renting the house. And received all that came in unto him. So we know in this context, in Acts chapter 28, Paul was actually a prisoner. But he wasn't incarcerated in the general uh, population of the prison. The Lord blessed him with great mercy and great grace and great favor and had a situation established where he was actually renting a home outside of the prison walls by himself, by himself, with a prison guard, of course, watching over him. So Paul rented for two years. What does the Bible say Paul did while he was renting and what he did with that home while he was renting it? A great example for you and I. It says, and Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house. Here's what he did. And received all that came in unto him. 31. Preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ. With all confidence, no man forbidding him. So a few things there. For two years, Paul rented his own home. Number two, he received everyone that came to him didn't turn away or deny any man, woman, or child. Number three, he preached the gospel of the kingdom of God. And number four, no man forbade him to do it. So God showed Brother Paul great favor. How about you and I? How about you and I? So renting a property in the country is a stepping stone from getting from point A to point B from the city to your final country destination. And renting allows you an opportunity to learn all the hard knocks the, the nooks and crannies, the nuts and bolts, as far as country living is concerned, on your way to your final stop. So we're going to be looking at two families this evening that the Lord has graciously blessed to put them in a place where they are renting from the city, renting in the country, and are learning great lessons on their way to their final destination. Again, tonight's segment is entitled, Stepping Stones, Renting Your First Country Property. Be blessed. Greetings, brothers and sisters of the Remnant Church, once again. I'm Brother Elvin Bridges of Living Man of Ministries, and we are thankful that you have joined us for this next segment and our webinar, of course, Out of the Cities, the Threequel, an Appeal to Parents to Leave the Cities. And we're very excited about tonight's topic. We're going to discuss how the Lord is leading families out of the city step by step and increment by increment as He leads them to their final country destination. So what he's doing for many families is giving them an opportunity or an option to be able to rent a property as they make their way toward their final destination in purchasing a property. We're going to discuss this tonight with a family that's already doing that. They are the Brenny family, B-R-N-E-Y, I'm sorry, B-R-N-Y, and I'm going to introduce them step by step or one by one. This is young brother Melvon Brenny. This is my young dear sister, Sister Markney Brenny. Hi. Amen. 
This is Sister Mios Brindy, the priestess of the home, and my good brother, Brother Mark Brindy, the priest of the home. Amen. So we're going to have a nice testimony time, a nice walk around the property, and we're going to discuss what the Lord is working or doing mightily on their behalf at this point in time. So my dear brother and sister here, brother and sister Brindy, are out here in this country. Again, we love to be transparent, but not necessarily, but also private at the same time. So we're not going to talk about what state we're in. All I'll tell you, brothers and sisters, is that we're not in Tennessee. So you guys left the state you were in. Right. And I can mention that state. That state was the state of Florida. Yes. And the Lord led you to a situation where you were able to start actually renting a place and learning about living in the country as you are also preparing to get to your final destination. Yes, Talk sir. a little bit about how the Lord opened up that door and that opportunity. All right. Uh, like you said, uh, we're, we're from um, Florida, but originally we're from Haiti, so we are Haitians. Okay. And um, we were in Florida, that's where we got the message. Yes, sir. And, uh, and, and we'll, we'll talk in more details about that. Uh, that's where we got the message. And um, we, we were looking for a place. We didn't know where to go. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't know anybody in the country. Yes, sir. So it was... It was very very tough so we just started we started to pray about it and god just opened a door for us in, in um in um in tennessee that's actually where we uh that's okay that's actually where we uh, uh we were at first at first okay initially yeah, yeah before god opened this door for us that we can be yeah. here right now yes sir so we were in a smaller i mean we left fort lauderdale okay florida uh -huh. we got to a smaller um town in Tennessee okay until God could bring us here uh, in the country okay so actually what the Lord did was took, take you from a big town right a big city in in Florida Fort Lauderdale yeah took you to a smaller you kind of stepped down a little bit yes sir took you to a smaller town in Tennessee in Tennessee and now he led you really out really in a remote area in, in the, the state country. that you're in now yes sir. really in the country yes sir okay yes sir. let's talk about how many acres you have out here uh, right now the property sits on um, eight eight point five acres Eight and a half. Eight and a half. And would you say that that's more than enough space? Yeah. Yeah, that's more than enough. Um, because when you when you think about the the amount of work that it takes to yes. cut the grass. Yes. Because uh, you got to maintain the grass. You got to maintain it. So it, I would say eight and a half is pretty much because you have enough trees. Yes, sir. I would definitely say that uh, eight and a half is is. Uh, this morning and uh, amen and also we are the national forest uh -huh. the national forest is um, right there so we don't worry about people building next to our house okay right. yeah because it's right there yeah. all right that's, that's, that's very important that is important so tell us before you got to the small town in Tennessee and ultimately to this country location in this state which we won't mention right. how much did you know and this is saints this is very important how much did you know about living in the country? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Uh, we grew up in Haiti, in the, in the city. city. Okay. Now, we didn't know each other in Haiti, but it wasn't the city. When we left Haiti, we came here, we came the to the city. States, it was the city. So all we know... The city life. The city life. That's, yes. that's, all, that's all we knew yes, at that time. So we didn't know anything. We, even when we came here, we didn't know anything and we didn't know what we were going to need how we we're going to survive we didn't know anything we okay. just moved on faith on faith yes and saints we have to understand this the key is faith and a lot of brothers and sisters hesitate and they have a lot of questions in their mind and they're more concerned about circumstances than being concerned about the lord moving on their behalf and moving on faith so you knew nothing how long have you been here uh a little over a year okay mm -hmm. so you got here and you were in the situation where you were prepared for the Lord to teach you everything, really. Yes, sir. Because yes. you were a clean slate, both of you. Yes. Right. Praise yes. God. Praise God. Okay, let's take. Let's start walking because I want the saints to see. You guys have been blessed with a very, very, <laughs> very, very nice piece of property here. Uh, again, it's eight and a half acres. And let's take talk about some of the things that are here. The Lord bless you to be able to Marky. have a garden area, which we're going to look at in a second. Yes, yes. Also, fruit trees. Yes. And you got a muscadine uh, set up over here, too, right? Muscadine grapes, correct? Yes. yes. And this was here already. 
Okay. Yeah, it was already here. Okay, so there's a little. So there's plenty of trees here, and if, okay. if we can get the camera person to pan up there, there's a beautiful, beautiful setting of a mountain ridge right behind. I'd say that's maybe, what, maybe a mile away? Give yeah. or take? Yeah, roughly. give or take more or less, yes. Yeah, so they're basically at the foothills here. It is a beautiful, beautiful shot. Just imagine leaving, walking out of your front door, and you walk out of your door, and the first thing you look at in the morning is a huge mountain range covered with God's green trees. It is beautiful. Brother, it is sister, a blessing. <laughs> amen. I see that just by standing here looking at it. Yeah. It's wonderful. Amen. So, somewhat what Moses would see when he was in the, in the area of Midian in the Bible. And it made a great impression on him. But we'll, we'll, we talked about that the other day. We'll get to that more later. Yes. Okay, so you're here, eight and a half acres. Let's walk around. So what would you say is the first thing the Lord began to teach you when you first got here because again you said you didn't really know much about country living at all yeah uh, we didn't know anything at all so I would say the first thing would be gardening Garden, yeah. okay uh, okay we know when we come one thing that we knew we knew that country living would be a lifestyle yes sir. it wouldn't be just we move into the country but it would be a lifestyle and we know gardening is part of it so we didn't know anything about gardening. We had never planted a seed in the ground yes. until we moved here. Yes, sir. But when we lived in Florida, before we moved here, um, when we heard the message about country living, so what, what we did, we started doing um, yes, in our, in our, in our patios. patios. You know, we, yeah, we planted, we some, we planted some, okay. some, some stuff, which was not su successful right. at first. But um, the Lord helped. The Lord was helping and was showing us pretty much what to, yes, what to do. Exactly. So this is important. So you started preparing right. for the country move before you even moved to the country. Right. right. You started right. preparing where you were. Right. When we got the message. Amen. Because we, 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 had, we had never done any, anything like this. So when we, st when we got the message, and like she said, we, um, we started doing something where we were in an apartment. Yes, sir. In Fort Lauderdale. An apartment. Yeah, an apartment. That's important. Yes. Yes. And then when we came here... That was the, one of the first things that we learned. We see that it's, it's going to take a lot of work. Yes, sir. It's not like people uh, make it out to be where you're out here in the country relaxing. Yes, sir. It's going to take a lot of work. We have to take a, it's going to take a lot of devotion. Yes, sir. Uh, we have to be devoted to do it. Committed. Committed. Yes, That's sir. Right, brother. Yes, sir. Yes. So that was the first thing that I would say that we learned when we... Uh, Praise here. the Lord. Gardening. Praise the Lord. I'm glad that somebody else said it and not me, that it's work. Being in the country is hard work and we're not going to paint a rosy cotton candy picture about being in the country it takes work it's it an entire work. change in life philosophy yes yes sir i agree praise the lord brother yes sir okay so let's continue walking so this is the home here this is the back of the house actually over here and like my brother said it takes a lot of work to keep this up now you said the first thing that you learned was gardening. What else would you say was one of the initial things that you realized you had to kind of get educated on as far as yourself and your family being able to survive out here? Uh, another thing that we quickly learned is that we, we would have to depend on God yes. for everything. Yes. You can come closer. Uh, even, even at night, you know, when we... Because remember, when we're in the city, even when you when you're sleeping, there's always some type of uh, street light. Yes, so sir. It's not total darkness. Dark. That's right. So we had to learn. We learned that quick. Yes. As soon as we turn off the lights in our in our house, it was pitch dark. So we had to get used to that. That's right. And another thing that we learned is that we, uh, in fact, uh, we have a neighbor who uh, who taught me how to chop woods. Because we know this this is something that we're gonna going to need. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, when, we, when we can't buy or sell, uh, we would need to have that skill set where we can chop our woods and, and be able to stay warm and, and, and uh, be able to provide for our family. So yes, that, that, that was another thing that we learned when we came here. Praise the Lord. Yes. That's important. Yeah. And it's important to know that many times when you get to the country, the Lord will put you in a situation where neighbors and not necessarily SDAs, but Gentiles. Yeah. yeah. And I don't say that in a negative way, but Gentiles or people outside of our, our faith right. will actually jump in and start to train you and teach you. So the Lord right. will teach you through them. Yes. Oh, it, it, it is amazing. I mean, we have a neighbor. 
and the amazing thing is the neighbor they do believe in country living. Yeah. They do not like the life in the city. Yes. Something. Yeah, you, yeah you, they you, don't. Yes. And, 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 and um, the neighbor have a son. We trying to talk to the, the son. The, the neighbor gave his son five acres of land of his property. Yes, ma'am. So he can build his own house. And right. what can tell you what happened when we had the conversation? Yeah, we, I him. talked to the son and we, we asked him, what, what is the reason that you're doing this? Mm -hmm. And he said, him and his wife have concluded that in order for them to get closer to God, they needed to be in the country. Mm. Not seven day Adventists. Now, not mm. seven day Adventists. I mean, we were just stunned mm. by this. They were not, uh, in order to get closer to God, to have a better relationship with God, they needed to be in the country. So that's why they're building their own home in the country and they're going to sell uh, what they have in the city. Brother, sister, I want to make sure that we, we really understand and clarify this. This is a Gentile neighbor, yes. your closest country neighbor, yes. who felt impressed to move to the country right. and build his own home because he believed he could get closer to God in the country. Yes. Yeah. Now, yes. brothers and sisters, we've been given and entrusted with the greatest wealth of truth ever entrusted to mortal human beings. What if you do we have when we know what to do and we're not doing it? The Bible says, it. to him that knoweth what to do and doeth it not, to him it is what? It is sin. sin. It is sin. James 4, 17. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that's a wonderful lesson for all of us. Yes. Number one, and I'm going to give a little homework for the saints that are watching this. Selected Messages, Book 1, page 120, paragraph 2. Please read that. And it talks about this exact same thing. How God's going to use others, not even in our faith, to help propel His work forward. Yes. Amen. Yes, we Praise can see it. We can a see it. Absolutely. We Amen. We can see it. Okay, so I actually hear him over there working now doing some, some tree cutting. Yes. And yes. You, you've been placed in a good I situation, brother. Yes. Yeah. Because he's willing, and you also said that he's going to be in a situation where he's actually starting to build the home. Yes. And you had mentioned to me earlier that you're going to maybe get involved and try to learn some yes. skills. Yes, yes. Uh, that is the, that is, the, I've actually, we've already spoken about that. I told him, whatever he need, whenever he needs help, when I'm off, I will go down and help him. Yes. Because uh, I feel impressed to help him. And at the same time, learn. We'll, we'll also be able to learn. Um, how to build a home. Yes, sir. Because we realize this is something important. Amen. Those type of knowledge when you have uh, a trade, especially, uh, you know, Amen. none of us has, we, we don't have a trade. Yes, yes So we sir. feel like in the country, those things are really valuable. Yes. So uh, we're going to use this as, as an opportunity to help them and at the same time to acquire that knowledge. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord, brother. Now, I know your situation, and we're going to walk, walk a little bit more now. I know your situation is, as far as renting is unique because right. The person that you're renting from is an Adventist. Yes, yes. Give us a little, without giving too much detail, right. give us a little information about that. Yeah, uh, that, again, that was an uh, answer to our prayer. Amen. Um, when we got the message in Florida, uh, we felt impressed that we, had, we needed to move. But we did not know where to go. Right. We did not know where to go. We felt impressed that we needed to move. We did not know where to go. I want the saints to really pay close attention to this brother's testimony. It's powerful. So, um, we had heard bro Brother Moses Mason. Okay, come a little closer. Uh, we had heard Brother Moses Mason uh, talking about country living. Okay. In fact, he had come down to Florida to do a seminar on country living. All right. That's where we first met him. All right. And then we were impressed that we need to do this, especially us having children, yeah. small children. We yeah. felt like the city was not the right spot for the children yeah. and for us for character building. Yes. Yeah. And appeal to parents to leave the city. Continue, my brother. Right. Yes. So um, we were just convinced. So what we decided to do, we said, well, we needed to move. We don't know what country living is like in the USA. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know anybody in the USA and the, who's in the country so the lord put uh put in our hearts that well you do know somebody in the country well the moses mm. i mean he, he talk about country living all the time so mm. he must be in the country mm. so what we did we looked up his his uh his yes. ministry okay address online right. and we found it where it's at and we just decided we're just gonna go there yeah to visit him so he can tell us everything that we need to know yes about country and living uh, what what year was this when this happened that was 2015 15. 15. So about two years ago yes okay yeah a little bit over two years ago okay, okay. yeah so we went there 
and um, he was actually surprised because he didn't know us. Uh, we just knocked on his door, and um, so you dropped in. We, yeah, we, we drove. We drove. We drove to the to the, uh, to the, the ministry. The ministry. Okay. Where the the, the media center. The media, the media center. center. The right. apocalypse. So we drove there, and when we got there, the um, the door was locked. But then when we looked up on the same property, we saw a house. Okay. We, we thought, man, this could be his house. Okay. So we just drove up there and we knocked, and he, you know, he opened the door. You know, he asked who we were, yeah. and we told him that we were Seventh Day Adventists, uh -huh. who's getting the country living message. Yes, sir. But we don't know where to go. So, but we felt impressed to come here. Yeah. So you can tell us what we need to do. Amen. What country we're living uh, uh, is really like. Amen. Amen. So then that's when he uh, he started showing us everything, telling us how he got this property, and 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 and, and that's uh, that's really the really start of it. Okay. So that's what the first step that we did. Though we didn't know what to do, but we felt like we can't just pray about it. We have to do something so God can work with us. Yes. We didn't want to just pray and sit not doing anything. Now. Continue, brother, please. Continue. Yes. So then, we, uh, brother, brother um, um, Moses was very happy to have us. He was excited. Yeah. Very see. excited. He said, Amen. he said, this is good to see a young couple Amen. with two small children trying to get out Amen. of the city. So he was very excited. In fact, that's when he, uh, he um, took us to he took us to uh, uh, to meet brother Bridges Amen. and his wife. That was a a, a blessing also. Amen. It so, was. So when we went back now to Florida, we see it. We were convinced that we had to leave, yes. and we see what it was like. Yes. So now the question was, God, where should we go, and how Amen. do we go? So let me take a second just to reiterate what Brother Brenny just said. <clears throat> you knew Brother Mason was talking about country living. Yes. You did a drive-by, so to speak, right. and dropped in on him. Right. He was excited to you because you were a very young couple with two young kids, and you... You heard the out of the city's message, right. and you hearkened to it. You yes. heard it, and you wanted to obey. Yes. Then he brought you to our home, and that was a very pleasant visit, and we were blessed by blessed by your presence as well in your visit. In fact, if I remember correctly, that was the last day of our first webinar in 2015, the first out of the city's webinar we did. Yes. I remember that. Okay. So you had an opportunity to see up close and personal with your own eyes, and so to speak, feel with your own hands what it was like to live in the country. You right. saw him in the country, you saw us in the country. Yes. So that experience helped to, to further along your understanding that it was necessary and that it was doable. Yes, that yes. Is, somebody's living in the country, somebody's listening. So we can do it too, Amen. by God's grace. By God's grace, Yes. praise God. That's wonderful. Let's walk some more. Let's walk some more. Awesome. She got it, she got it. See? So, I told you. You end up leaving Brother Mason and leaving actually our house last, yeah. and you go back to Florida, back yeah. to Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale, a big city. Yeah. Pretty that, big. So at that point, the wheels started to turn in your mind. I really do need. We need. My family needs to be out of the city, yeah. especially my children. Yes. Yeah. Especially my children. And I'm sure in your mind you're also thinking, Wow, they've been used to the city life for these first few years, very, very impressionable years of their lives, how are they going to adapt to country living? And I'm sure the audience can see right now, it hasn't been a difficult transition. But let's, no. let's, let's go to how now the Lord led you to the little town in Tennessee, and let's go from there as far as how this opportunity opened up for you to rent. All right. So, uh, when we left, uh, let's take a walk. Yeah, when we left Tennessee, when we left your house, okay. we went back to Florida. Fort Lauderdale, uh, we were both convicted. We saw what country living is like. Okay. But, and we know that we need to do it. Yes. But then we didn't know where, how, and um, when. Yeah, so my sister is not looking for job. Mm -hmm. I mean, not looking for country living. Okay. Looking for job. She was in Fort Lauderdale with me. Amen. And she decided, and along with her husband, okay. that they went to move to Tennessee for jobs. And okay. we saw that as an opportunity that we can move with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because we figured if we're in that area, then it will be easy, easier for us to find a country uh, property. Yes, sir. And that's what we did. Now, people didn't exactly understand why we're doing it. Mm -hmm. Uh, meaning our families. Yes. Um, Even a couple friends. Yes, yeah, some friends uh, didn't exactly understand why we're doing it. Yes, they, 
some of them kind of thought that we lost it. Now, were these friends in the church or out of the church? In yes, the church. in the they church. Were, so these were Adventist friends. Yes, Adventist friends that, and family. Okay, that started doubting you as yeah. far as why you're making this decision to leave right. everything you've known. Right. Uh, job. Job. I, I had to leave my. That's another thing. I didn't have a job. Yet, but uh, I figured. You know, if this is what the Lord wants, then you must have a job for me in Tennessee. Yes. So I decided to uh, to leave my job in Tennessee and for us to just move my sister, stay in in one bedroom with her. Okay. And then and in the meantime, the plan was for me to look for a job. Yes, sir. Because uh, we had we, yeah we had a little saving and that, that kept us going. Amen. So uh, so so just again just to reiterate, what you're saying is. If the Lord was going to open up an opportunity or a door for you right. and provide a home for you, He has to also, because it's part of His character, to provide provision for provision. you to stay there and yes. remain there yes. and help you to survive. Exactly. Praise the Lord. Exactly. And that's what we did. Um, uh, we moved with her to that little town in Tennessee. We left everything behind. Yes, and that was another thing too. We were con contemplating, should we bring our furniture so, or, or stuff I mean yeah. what should we do there because yes, you know that's another struggle mm -hmm. uh, but we figured if we take them with us then we have to pay uh, storage and all of that yeah. which, which we didn't we'll have money at the time now. We'll and we, we'll but we firm. felt like we would yeah, be very. heavy yeah. so we decided to just give them away okay uh, and just come just with our clothes, clothes and our okay. kitchen stuff to cook with that's all that we bought with so us. just to clarify you didn't sell your stuff. You did what? We'll give them away. Okay, so you blessed somebody else. Right. Yes. Amen. Just wanted to clarify that. Right. All right. So, so. Um, and then when we got here, um, a month and a few weeks, I found a job. Amen. Yes. Uh, to the small town in Tennessee. Amen. I found a job. Okay. And we were able to, to help my sister pay for the house because we were staying in one bedroom with her. Okay. Right. Oh, so we were able to help her a little bit. And, and in the meantime, we we're looking. Mm -hmm. but we we're I, looking. I have to say that. I'm sorry for cutting you, hubby. I have to say that. Um, when you are looking for country property, it's not just stay there and then and you'll have a country property. You have to pray. Right. It takes Amen. a lot of prayer. Amen. Right. And I learned how to pray. Amen. For Amen. that particular because reason. I know exactly Amen. what she means because what's happening is when we were living with my sister, we were telling God where we want to be, wanted to be. Mm. You were telling Him yes. where you wanted to live. Yeah, because right. there was a church that we were going to in Tennessee. We felt comfortable yes, with the church family, and we felt like we need to stay close to that church. I'm with you. Uh -huh. So we were asking God to put a, to put us in that area. Yes, yes. sir. And doors, no, doors were never opened. Mm. We kept praying for it. Yes. Nothing happened. Interesting. It wasn't until we said, God, I think we we, we, we going wrong about this. Yes, sir. And yes. we said, Lord, it's your will. Wherever you want to place us, yes. we'll go. That's right. So it's almost like the Lord needed his son in order to finish the work that he sent him to do. He needed to hang on that tree for six hours to finish his work. Yes, sir. He needs us to finish the work, not necessarily the way you think it should be finished or yep. where you need to be for him to finish it. Right. He knows best. He knows best. Amen, brother. Exactly. And then uh, once we started praying, we changed our prayer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That Lord, you put us where you think is best for us. Mm -hmm. Where we can be a blessing to other people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, that's when we met a family. Okay. Mm -hmm. A present truth family. Amen. Who were uh, in the country. Okay. Uh, they were praying for a family. They were praying to God. To bring them a family. Oh, listen, Saints, please listen to this, please. To bring them a family that could stay in their place while they go somewhere else to do to take care of some business okay. that they needed to take care of. Yes, sir. And they came to us and with the proposition. We we we, we were amazed because they remember we left everything in Florida, mm -hmm. and the proposition was this house would have everything in it. That we would just be renting this house with everything right. in the country. So fully furnished. Everything. In the country. Right. The country. Eight and a half acres. Right. Plenty of room. Already fruit trees already established. Yes. Garden already set up. Yeah. And fenced. Yes. Continue, my brother. So now let's let before now let's get the spiritual part of that. What am I go what am I going there for? I'm not going there. I'm not going there. And but you know what? The, the Lord lead us where he wanted us to be. Right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. 
He led us where he wanted us to be. Wanted us to be. And that's, that's important because you see, even about us leaving our stuff in Florida, mm -hmm. um, if we had brain, if we had, if we see, if we had everything with us, it would have been impossible for us to be here because we couldn't, we could not have told them or to take your stuff with you because we have our own stuff. Right. So the right. fact that we came empty-handed. It was an easy fit sure. in that particular place that Lord, we are in. What right you're now. saying is the Lord knows what He's doing. He knows what He's doing. Yes, sir. That is, that, that's no question. He knows what He's doing. Praise God. So that's how we met. We met the family in that little town in Tennessee. Yes. And uh, they made that proposition. We prayed about it. The Lord was leading. Mm. Uh, though, see, the funny thing is that where they live, we were not looking at that area when we were looking for a place. Okay. So God put us somewhere we weren't looking for. Because yes, remember, right. after I said earlier, we were telling God where we wanted yes, to sir. be. Yes, so I hear you. it wasn't until after we said, well, God put us wherever you want us to be, mm -hmm. then he put us in that particular right. area. In, a, in an area where you weren't even looking for a property at all. Yes. Right. We, yes, we were not looking in that area at all. And maybe not even in a state yes where you were looking necessarily right because you actually had your mind on a, on tennessee right right but, and the church family and the place you felt comfortable in yes. was so many times oftentimes saints the lord puts us in situations where we're uncomfortable because he needs to do what he needs to shape our characters and a lot of times it takes trial to do that yes in most cases it takes that yes praise the lord amen right amen so uh we, we, were, we were so happy yes that god would place us here wow uh, because now we're looking back, we said, you know what? We didn't know anything about country living. But the fact that God placed us in an area that's ready, that has everything that we would need. Yes, so now we know what we need that's right. when we're in a country. When, exactly. we, when God does bless us with our own place, yes. we know exactly what to get. Praise the Lord. Brother. Because he, He's placed us in a place that already had everything. Yes. And we felt like it was God leading mm -hmm. because we weren't prepared for that. So yes. God put us somewhere where everything was ready. everything was ready. Praise the Lord. So now we're learning and we see what our needs are and we're just going to pray and ask God to give us what we need. Yes, yes ma'am. Praise the Lord. I want to take a minute now. We're going to go take a seat on the country swing. Amen. And we're going to talk a little bit about how once you moved in, what you got here, and how the Holy Spirit began to train you yes. and teach you so you could be much more prepared when it's time for you to leave this place and move forward and kind of graduate to your own place. Yes. Let's do that now. Why don't we talk about now, as you all know, the, the title of this webinar, or the subtitle, is an appeal to parents to leave the city. What we'd like to know, brother and sister Brenny, is what were your initial thoughts? Now, you're, you're in a situation now, you're ready to move to the, the home in the country, this home, this property, and start renting. You know the Lord is leading. It's clear that he's opened the door yes. for you to be able to get to be in a place temporarily where you can right. learn everything you need to learn. Right. Got a great neighbor next door that's willing to help you. Right. Who knows everything about country that been probably been out here his whole life. Yes. And so now, are you thinking at all, okay, the kids? They, you've been here four years, so when you first moved here, how old were they? Four and five. Yeah. Okay, four and five, okay. So did you ever in your mind, did it cross your mind, well, they're used to being, because you guys weren't in a house per se, but more in an apartment. Apartment, okay, yeah. in Florida. Yeah. And you were in one room, with your sister, for right. the most part? Right, in Tennessee. In Tennessee, okay. Right. So once you moved here, to this particular state, did it cross your mind, how are these kids, my kids, going to react to the transition in their environment? Instead of walking out the house, or the apartment building, and seeing another apartment building, or buildings across the street, right. now, we, they walk outside, and they see basically, from their point of view, essentially, a park. 
Right. It's a park and it's playtime. Yeah. How did you think about how they would adapt and react to that? Well, at first, we um, uh, we weren't really sure how they would adapt to it. Now, all their lives, they have been confined in some type of um, yes. um, apartment. Uh -huh. They've been in some. Uh, you can't let them out because you know. Now you let's talk. Let's talk about the reason why, or the reasons why you couldn't let them out. Right, because you know you you don't know who your neighbor is, the okay. influence from other kids. Okay. You okay. know, gunshot every you know every once in a while you can yes, hear sir. outside going on. And so music, so the, 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 music, the music. We don't want them to listen yeah. to this type of music. The yes. cursing. Yes. Uh, so all of those reasons, we have to keep them inside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of that's one of those things that you know really really bothered us when we were in the in the city. Because we feel like the kids, they're like in, in a prison, yes. uh, for lack of a better word. Yes, sir. Uh, because okay. we couldn't let him out. Yes, sir. But when we moved here, I think it was a seamless transition for them. Okay. They love it automatically. Yes. I mean, when they come out here, started to play with the dogs. It's, I mean, if you, if you didn't know, you would have thought that they've always been in, mm -hmm. in, in the country, mm -hmm. because the, the transition was so seamless to them, uh, it, it was no issue at all. Yes, sir. And they love it. Yes, you can sir. see it in their face. Yes, sir. You can see it. So uh, we weren't sure how it would be, but when when the time actually came, everything seemed to be mm. uh, yeah. uh, going pretty good for on them. The kid, yeah, on the kids' side. For the kids. Yeah. Okay. Now for well, us. Yeah. Uh, let me adults. Uh, no, so <laughs> let me. Well, with all due respect, <laughs> I want to stick on the kids' issue just okay. for another another few minutes. So w would I be safe in assuming what you were saying? There were, you said there were four and three. Yes. Right. Okay. Would you no, say, five, no, five, five and, and four. four. Okay, so there's six and, and five now. Yeah. Right. Okay. So when there were five and four, you moved out here to the country. Do you believe because they were at such a young age, it was easier, it was easier to make the transition with them as opposed to maybe if they had been like maybe nine or ten or eleven or twelve because they're environment wasn't so much forming their characters per se as much because there was such babies at the right. time. Uh, I, I, yes, I, I, I agree and we both agree. The younger they are when you get out, yes. it's easier. Yes. I mean if you, if they're like in teenage years, it's gonna yeah. be a little harder. Yes sir. Because they've already have friends. Sure. They feel like they're gonna leave their friends. Or oh, what am I gonna do when I'm there? But right now, it's about like my son was four. Now that's all he knows here in the country. That's right. right. That's right. And like, he forgot uh, uh, all about the, the apartment and all of life. that. Yeah. Because he was so young and he wasn't uh, influenced Amen. too much Amen. By, by the uh, uh, city life. So that's, that, right. that's why it was it was easier. Amen. Uh, the, the younger, I would say the better. Yes. Right. So basically, <clears throat> once they get a little older, it's a little more challenging. Yes. Because their characters have been formed for the most part almost you could say for life except we believe inspiration when inspiration yes. tells us that once they're once they're in this environment around god's works and the works of nature that their characters will be changed imperceptibly into the same image mm -hmm. and yes. that's what happens when they're yes. older but it's not as much work involved but as many challenges when they're younger okay praise the lord praise yes. the lord so did you have a question you want to answer from your son that's okay. Yes, We're yes, alive. you can get one. No Thank problem, you. sir. Amen. And that's the answer to an appeal to parents to leave the city right there. Amen. <laughs> so let's talk about, you know, you mentioned a minute ago, we talked about how uh, once you got here, I wanted to talk about how Jesus began to train you and teach you as far as now you're in this new environment for the first time, for the first time. So the first thing you learned, you mentioned earlier, was the fact that you had to start cutting the grass and keep that. Keep it low. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the reason? Uh, well, the reason for that is you don't want any creatures hiding. Because you have uh, children playing here, so you want to always keep it low. Yes, sir. Uh, and that's something that we had to learn. Uh, in the cities, um, in the cities, you know, uh, you get people to do it for you. Right. But out here, that's some of the things that we're learning. Uh, it's good to be uh, self-sustainable. Amen. Uh, where you can do things on your own. Uh, by God's grace, yes, um, be able to learn how to do these things. Praise God. Uh, now, for us, mm -hmm. 
as, as adults, it was a bit different. Yes. Okay. Uh, we had to learn, you know, a lot of time when you when you talk about country living, people think you are hiding. You go to hide, and we had to learn here that we are not hiding. Correct. Uh, it's really about our character, yes. because we have to learn that we have to depend <laughs> on God here. Mm -hmm. Because one thing that we, when you in the country, you learn quick is the money in the city is, is different from the money in the country. The money in the country seems to be. Um, a little less. So, so there's a different economy <laughs> yes. out yes. here as opposed to being in, in a metropolitan area. Yes, where you learn not to depend on God more. Amen, brother. Because sometimes you don't see where it's going to come from, but you just have to trust yes. that God puts you there and he will take care of you. So that is something that God had to work with us on. Amen. Uh, uh, and that's one of those things that we had to learn as adults yes. when we came here. Comment on that, sister? You agree? Yes, I agree, but um, I was thinking while Mark was talking. Being here was not easy for me personally. The reason why, Mark, Mark goes to work every day <laughs> and I stay home by myself. I mean, with God, we know, but you yeah. know, the human, the human nature right. make you feel like you alone here. Yeah, right. You yeah. know, um, so every day Mark goes to work, I feel very lonely with the kids here. And one thing to the devil put in my mind, it keep, that thought keep coming what if something some creatures come and grab your kids you know that's the fear that the devil wants us to have the devil wants us to have that we have to overcome yeah and we have yeah. to overcome, we have to overcome right. that. yes right. and we prayed and it was hard on me and we prayed we prayed and the lord god gave us lord, victory yeah, god gave us victory and another thing too we have to learn is in the city you depend on friends because you have you know you need something you just call somebody you need this you just call somebody but out here, we have to learn, especially with no internet uh, here, yeah. uh, not the best connections with your yeah. phone. Yeah. So you don't really want to be on the phone all the time. So you have that's more right. time to now spend with ah, God. Ah, that's key, brother. Yeah. Let me just reiterate that as well. So where you are is very remote. Yeah. There's no internet service, so it's very, it's choppy. Right. You don't have, you can't depend on it as much as you were in the city. Right. Because it was at your disposal 24 hours a day. Right. So now you're you're forced in a in a matter of speaking. Right. Or then again, it may be providential. Yes, sir. Now you have to depend and spend more time trusting in God, spending right. more time with Him in general. Right. And less time off of that computer. Exactly. And we can yeah. see it. it. It is providential. Uh, at first, when we first got here, we thought it was man, it's gonna be hard. No internet. Mm. It's gonna be hard. Over time, we don't even realize it. Yes. Because what's happening is, is because a lot of time we have gods in our lives, we don't realize that they are gods to us until That's right. we don't have them anymore. We see how much we miss them. Yes, sir. But we had to uh, get over that, and 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 uh, we got to a place now where if we have an issue, instead of calling someone, we call we, on God first. we, we, we God. talk about it and we pray first because we have the time and. It's, it's not as convenient where you could just go and talk to somebody. Oh. And also, the reason why I like the, the country living life is because in the city, I don't know for other people, but you get to um, be with friends all the time. But now it's family time. Yeah, amen. Yeah, it's mostly your family. That's who you know. That's who you have. After yeah. God, you have your family. Exactly. We so, and then it, it gave that... Um, um, that it, it, it make the fam it makes the family stronger. Yeah. Exactly. In the, uh, because the we talk together, yeah. we spend time together now. Because uh, it's us. It's out here, us and God. That's right. Nobody else. Beautiful. So there's no such thing as you don't ever spend time with your children. Uh, spend time with this. Or let me go such. play well balls with the boys. I'll right. uh, play dominoes with the boys. There's yeah. no there's no such thing. That's right. Out here. You know, you spend time with the family, and we become one. We become stronger, and and we spend time with the kids, and it's priceless, to be honest. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. I, I really hope that you're really getting this and appreciating what we're hearing here. God's plan is perfect for us. He wants us in an environment, in a culture, in a setting where we're spending basically all of our time with our minds and our attentions and affections on Him. Yes. Away from all the distractions and the idols that are in our heart that we don't even most time even see or recognize living in the city. Right. That's very important. Now you mentioned something else very critical a second ago about it. You mentioned it actually. You being home and him being where all day? At, At work. work. Say that again? At, At work. work. So you're saying you're in the country and you have a job. Yes. Okay. 
Now that's one of the biggest questions and biggest concerns for people that we are that we have addressed to us, my wife and I is, well, how am I gonna survive in this in the country? How am I gonna feed my family? Now, first of all, that should force you to look more at Psalm 50 verses 10 through 12. That's the answer there. Because he owns everything. Yeah. He can yeah. take care of you. And we mentioned a minute ago that once if he's gonna open the door for you to be in the country, then he has to, by his nature and his provide, care, yes. provide for you to be there. So you got to the country. And how long did it take for God to open up a door for you to be blessed with a job? Uh, when we first moved to Tennessee, in the small town, it took me a month to find a job okay. in Tennessee. Okay. And then when we moved to that place that we are now, yes. I said, Lord, if we're going to have this place, then I need no. uh, another job a little closer mm -hmm. to, that, uh, to the place that we want to live. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't within you know, a month. A month. Was it a month later? Um, I found. I, I started this job that I, in, I am at now. So, you know, we really feel like you know wherever the Lord leads, He has a job. He has a, some type of a way yes, sir. that we can provide for our families. So you have a job mission that you're driving how far? Right now, I, I drive uh, one hour. One hour. And that's that's uh, not traffic lights, nothing like that. Just That's country right. drive. Amen. So I'm not getting stuck in traffic. So, like so instead of a slow, congested, arduous, tough commute right. and stop and go traffic, right. it's a beautiful, traffic free yes, sir. drive yeah. to work and back home. Back home. So you're in an environment where you're just seeing nature on the way and back home, yep. which keeps you your attention focused on the Lord. Right. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful De lesson. Definitely. God is good. I know a lot of saints are interested in that. And again, there's no right or wrong answer. There's no no blueprint for that, per se. Every situation, every scenario is different. Yes. We cannot compare apples and oranges, correct? Yes. Praise the Lord. Let's take some time and look at some of the blessings that the Lord has provided the Brenny family that was already or were already here in place when they moved to this rental country property. Okay, so now we're at the, we're starting at the what is it? The Muscadine. Yeah, Muscadine. Muscadine vine, if you want to call it that. Yeah. Uh, this was already here when you guys got here. It was. We just had to maintain it. Yes. Was that a blessing? Yes or no? Yeah, blessing. Oh, man. Indeed, blessing. Let's taste some. Let's see if we can get some. Yeah, those are really plenty. Plenty. Now this time of year, they're not as as plentiful, correct? Right. Not as right. Right. We can still get a little a little flavor. No, they are right. They are right. They are fully right. Mm. Fully right. Mm. Now, it's very good. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Now, we're, we're in between meals, so we're going to just taste. Amen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise yeah. the Lord. Very good. Mm. Very sweet. Yeah, that was a blessing. It came... It was Daisy? already here when we, when we got here, so yes. it was definitely Daisy? a blessing for us. Very nice. Very nice. How about scuba dimes? Mm. No. That's it. Whoa. From Fort Lauderdale yes, to, to being in the country, picking, picking muscadine. Yes, sir. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It is let's, let's move over to the fruit trees now. Okay, so we're making our way toward the fruit tree section of the, of the land. Of course, that's the house over here. We just came from the muscadine back there. And what type of tree is this, my brother and sister? That's an apple. That's apple an apple tree. tree. Okay, apple tree, and that was already here. They're all already here. Yes. yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Let's move on. Um, <clears throat> Just talk to us. That one is another apple tree. That one um, had some apple this year. Yeah. Okay. It bears some, it bears some mm, apples. apples for us this year. Amen. Yeah. How'd they taste? Nice? Oh, yes. Yeah, they taste nice. They taste nice. Okay. Um, this one is a... Do me a favor and turn, face the camera this when you... One is there a, you go. Um, Amen. Peach. peach tree. All right. Yes. Peach tree. Okay. It does have some sweet peaches in there, but the worms and the birds and the birds keep getting them. Ah, so they like they like peaches too. Yes. Right. Yes. They do. They do. Okay. Yes. All right. Let's continue around here. So, we got okay. A couple of more trees. Yes, we have um, some more. All right. All the way over there. Okay. I'm gonna zoom a little bit. Yes. 
Okay. And it's a blessing to have some trees, some fruit trees in the property, you know. And you have, it just gives you a, like a feeling like you, when you move, when you move to your own property, you mm -hmm. want to have these things on your property. That's right. You know, so this is a, um, right there, it's a pear tree. Okay. Pear tree, and that's another one. Yeah, that's another pear. That's another pear tree. Okay. This one had a couple pears also this year. Amen. Yes. It's nice eating free food, isn't it? Right. Right, and it's fruit. It's fruit, so it's be, it's very good for us. Amen. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. right. Praise the Lord. I'm gonna get some of the land here now. Over there in the distance, you see the garden all fenced in. Let's take a walk over here. We have another apple tree. That's the biggest apple tree we have. Okay. That size. Persimmon tree. Uh, and we have a persimmon. Persimmon. Okay. Persimmon, yeah. All right. Persimmon tree. Also. Now, do you guys plan? On maybe planting a few of your own, you're going to just go with what was already here. Uh, the I haven't decided. Is to go with what they have. Okay. Uh, yeah. And if it comes that we see something that we like, uh -huh. we could just go ahead and plant it. Because we have that option also. Okay. So the, the owners gave you the option as renters yes. to add to their fruit tree collection, so to speak. Yeah. Praise God. That's nice. Uh, so those are. Uh -huh. are These are apple trees. This one right here. Okay. And that one. Apples. Okay. Amen. The fall, so the leaves. Yes. Are right. Falling down. Right. Yes, ma'am. Just for those of those, those who may not be aware of the fact, because of the time of year, yeah. there's there's no trees on there. There's, there's no leaves. There's no leaves exactly. Right. Yeah. No foliage. Amen. Okay. We have plenty of persimmons. Yeah, yeah. Zoom in on that. Yeah, that's very nice. Praise God. So this garden spot here, which is a nice sized garden and was already fenced in, was already here when they got here. Uh, do us a favor, sister, and share with us what types of vegetation you were able to plant. This year. Since you've been this year. Since yes, I've been here. Year. Yes, because okay. now, of course, it's the, you know, we're in the fall season and, you know, everything's kind of winding down. Um, but I'll, I'll ask you, I need to ask you, do you plan on planting a fall or winter garden at all out here? Um, I haven't decided. We haven't decided for the uh, winter because we are aware of um, rabbits in our garden. Okay. So the rabbits um, came last year and ate all our winter vegetables. Mm. And it is not easy. After hard work, mm. and the rabbits come and eat, uh, you eat your vegetables. It's not yeah. easy. So until we fence, you know, the chicken wire fence, I think yes. they call them. The right, fence right. And then we're going to start doing the greens because that's what they like. Right. That's yeah. what they like. And maybe, yeah. a, maybe a second dog, maybe. A or second dog will work too. If yes. we got a second dog, that will work. Yes. yes. Okay, because there's some, definitely some provisions you can make to keep them out. Yeah. Absolutely so. Yeah. Several actually. So yes. yeah, since we've been here, we've had well, a lot we, of stuff in here. And before that, before we get into that, when you when we are when you're gardening you need a lot of patience. Yeah, we learned that we have to learn yeah. that. Patience and you are you you might not be successful the first time you play. So it's like a the first year pretty much is like you learn. Yeah. You see where you, your where your downfall is. And then you, next year you get, you know, you, you do you do the best that you can. So you're in training. <laughs> yes, it's and like you know, in training. The, the actually, the training really never stops. Yeah, it really never stops yeah. because every year you got you kind of have different different ways of raising um different kind of things that yes. you want in your garden. Yes. So this year when we first got here, we planted um some tomatoes. Uh, um, at first, the beginning of the year, we planted um, uh, um lettuce. Lettuce. We have lettuce. lettuces. Okay. We had um, the greens, uh, the collards. We planted these things. Uh, Everything. Lettuce. Uh, 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 we have lettuce, tomatoes. Um, we have um, beets. We had beets. Carrots. Carrots. Okay. Uh, um, eggplants. Right. Okras. Right, and we have a lot of potatoes. A lot of potatoes. We yes. had the onions and garlic. Yes, we mm. have lots of onions and garlic. Mm -hmm. Yes. Onion. And we have what they call this one again. Wait, now what is Sister Marcy? What are you saying? What is that in your hand? 
onions. Green onions. Green onions. Yes. Green what onions. else do they call those? Stallions. Stallions. Right? Yep. Yes. Amen. We have them. And Makni, what is this again? Honeydew and cannoli. Honey, Honey do and do. No, I need to pause. Now, did brother, sister, do you hear the young sister giving us a little lesson Amen. in the garden? Now, could she have learned that yes. in the city where she was living? Maybe so much, maybe to some degree, but not the experience she's getting actually being in nature learning. There's yes. a huge difference. A huge, yes. huge difference. And without all the distractions, she's able to retain it. Right. right. And we yes. have some um, corn. We have some corn too this year. Oh, we have right. some peas. Corn. Okay. Um, yeah, and we have um, bell peppers, bell peppers, um, um, watermelon, yeah, cucumbers. Yeah, cucumbers. Wow. We had what else? We had um, um, peas. Okay. Um, we had peas. Yeah. We had no, yeah, we had those. We had peas. Um, but we had quite a few, quite a few vegetables, here. Yeah. and it's been a, it's been a learning process. Yes. Because we did learn there's a lot of things that you cannot plant with. There's certain things you cannot plant yes, close sir. to each other. Yes. So we have to learn. It, 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 it is indeed a learning process. And a certain time to plant certain things. Right. So we, 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 we didn't know these things. So we have to go on YouTube, really. So you're saying there's a time to sow and yep. a, time a time to, to harvest. Yeah, that sounds like that sounds biblical. Actually. Biblical, right. Uh, amen. Right. Amen. Right. Right. And the harvesting part is the most wonderful yep. thing that it's can rewarding. happen. Yes. yes. The first time we planted to, um, potatoes, um, what we learned too with the kids in the country, when you plant something, when we put the seeds in the garden, they are so um you're like, mommy, when is this coming out? We, you have to explain to them the process. Right, right. No, you plant the seeds, just and like it says in the Bible. And God makes God it grow. makes it grow, right. but this is how it grows. We need water and the sunshine. Water and sunshine, and we explain that to them. So when there's no sunshine, mommy, so there's no sun today. So what's up, what happened to the garden? Yes, the Lord you know, will take care of it. The Lord will take care of it. Amen. So they learn these things, and once they start growing, they see the shape of the leaves. They know and they which already one know. It is. Mommy, that's tomatoes. Mm. Mommy, that's um, whatever. That's this is that. This is that. That's because right. they see the different kind of shapes. This, yes. this thing is just amazing to us. Yes, it is. Lord. Because Mothni can just look, look at something in the and she garden. Tell you what it she is. tells you what it is. Yes. <laughs> and it's so much easier to retain it at their age. Right. You know, yeah. it really is. It's yes. a scalpel. Memories, <laughs> memories are, are beyond, yeah. beyond acceptance. Praise the Lord. So. You have a garden that's already in place and you're learning great object lessons by being here, not necessarily owning the property that they're going to be in in the future, right. but where God has them now in training school. Yes. Yeah, praise the Lord for yeah. that. Now when we came in the garden, we noticed that you had a little device here, a little homemade device. Can you kind of explain that to us? And I'm going to ask the camera person to back up and we're going to show this here. I think this is very important because of course you have something that's going to come around your your garden area, right? They're called deer, aren't they? They call deer. They, they like to eat too. Yes. So this is. This yes. But this wasn't working. So what we did, somebody told us about these. So these are you can get these from uh, Dollar Tree. Mm -hmm. You know, pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. So we just put them together, and they bounce against each other. They make that noise when the wind blows. When the wind blows, and then that keeps all kinds of creatures out. Yeah. They think it's somebody. Yeah. So they get scared and, and run away when this thing, when they make that noise like yeah. this. So it's been good. It's been good. And we also have some, um, a little light, very cheap lights we got from Amazon. Okay, I see. They, they use the solar. Yeah. So at night, uh, they just uh, keep light this thing up. light up. That way the dogs can see yeah. if, if, if something is coming here. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So just little simple ways to be able to maintain the garden without having other critters come in and eat up all the food that God has that you need to eat. Right. Mm -hmm. And they, right. they will find other, other places and other means to be able to survive. And we need to be eating our own food out of our own gardens. Amen. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord for that. Praise God. Amen. <clears throat> so we'd like to thank the Brinney family for allowing us to come onto their country property and to spend a little time talking about how God has greatly blessed them, getting them to the halfway point in their eventual journey, in their journey to eventually get to a place where they actually own their own land. Of course, God owns all things, but that God will entrust them with a piece of property to be able to continue raising these kids and learning themselves in the school of Christ in their fear 
and admonition of the Lord. Let's move on now to our next family who is in the exact same situation as the Grimms. Good evening once again, brothers and sisters of the Remnant Church. My name is Brother Elvin Bridges of Living Man and Ministries, and tonight we are continuing our segment on stepping stones, leaving the city step by step, increment by increment, using the option of renting as the Lord guides you to your final destination in the country. We are here this evening in the beautiful state of Tennessee this time around. As you can tell, the weather has changed quite dramatically. And I'm going to introduce to you now the family that we'll be interviewing and having a nice discuss discussion, I believe a very compelling discussion this evening about their move to the country. We have the priestess of the home now here, uh, Sister Wani Gregory, young Gianna Gregory, Gianna, we call her Gigi, and we have Brother Ganeve Gregory, yeah. the priest of the home here. So sit back and relax. I believe the Lord has a great blessing in store for us all this evening. Amen. So once again, brothers and sisters, we're here with the, the Gregory family. Yes. And uh, we neglected to introduce two members of the family. One member, Sister Janiah, is actually on the camera. And another member, Brother Joshua, Joshua Gregory, is out playing on the property. So we're going to make sure we introduce them to you before we finish our discussion. And I don't want to look at this so much as an interview, but it's more of a discussion between a couple of brothers and a sister in the faith. Amen. Yes. So the first thing we want to discuss is, and it's such, there's so much to talk about, so much to discuss. Uh, when did you first start to hear the out of the cities or leave the cities message? Well, first of all, let's go back to where you came from. Or originally, you're from what country? Originally? Well, uh, originally we're, well, I was born in Miami, Florida. Okay. My wife, she was born in, in Cape Haitian, Haiti. Okay. Um, you can speak up a little. She um, and her, her mom moved here when she was fairly young, pretty yes. two, two two years, years old. old. Okay. And uh, she was raised in Miami, Florida. I was raised in Miami, Florida. Okay. And um, I was uh, my mom accepted the faith when we were fairly young. I could actually still remember when she got baptized. Mm -hmm. It was a little tent meeting, and um, 
we were Catholics before, and then she ex accepted the faith. So I pretty much grew up Adventist. Okay. And my wife, she didn't, uh, she didn't grow up Adventist. Okay. We were Catholic first, and then Baptist, but we weren't really in the church like that. Okay. Um, Speak up a little, sister. Yes. Okay. Um, we were um, pretty much in the world mostly. I came into the faith after I met him. Yeah. Okay. Um, which was I probably I think I was like 19 or 20. Okay. Years okay. Old. So you're a, a third generation Adventist. Second. Second. Generation. Okay. And you're first. Yes. And like me, a first out of the Roman Catholic communion. Yes. yes. Okay. Amen. Yes. So we have something in common. <laughs> yes. Amen. Yes. So you were in Miami at this point. Um, now you guys, I know your background. You shared with me a little bit how you actually were had gone off and become the prodigal right. for a certain amount of time. Talk right. to us about that a little bit. Well, you know, um, growing up as an Adventist and you're living in the cities mm -hmm. and you're attending these uh, public school systems and stuff and you, yes, sir. you're you pretty much around all city life. Mm -hmm. And um, my mom, she joined this new faith and there's a lot of things that started to change. Okay. And um, I can remember going to school and I was ashamed of this newfound faith because of the fact that mm. we were we were attending church on Saturdays, which was mm. foreign to the kids in the yes. neighborhood, the kids at the schools. Yes. And um, I uh, I didn't want to seem so different. Yes. So I actually wanted to I wanted to hide that identity. So even though we know we are God's peculiar people, <laughs> at that stage in your life as a child or teenager, right. you didn't want to be peculiar. No. You wanted no. to blend in. Right. Yes, wanted sir. to blend, blend in. I'd actually, I would actually, you know, think to myself, like, out of all the religions, mm. why this mm. one <laughs> religion that is so set apart from, from right. the majority? Yes, sir. And um, I had a few other advantaged kids that I went to school with, and they would also... Um, not practicing or when they were in school they definitely didn't show it okay so I, I joined that crowd and um, I grew up in the school um, in an area where you know clicking up and and being around the boys and hanging yeah. out and yeah the bad boy image was the uh, was the the prominence right so to speak. right and um, so there was a lot of and just for those watching who may not be up on the on the lingo or the, right. the, the <laughs> vernacular Clicking up, can you kind of... Clicking up, when I mean clicking up, it would be uh, like you would say, uh, your modern day gangs. Yes. Sort of. And we're going to get to boys, that too. A yeah. group of boys come together and yeah. form form their sect, their group, and call themselves, they can make a name for themselves, either it's a number of the street that mm -hmm. they're living on or they represent, or it's uh, it, it could be various names. Yes. And, um, now I want to pause just, just for a second. Yes. Now I want to make sure, Saints, you get this because remember the theme of this entire webinar is an appeal to parents yeah. to leave the city and the reasons why they need to leave the city in terms of what their children are being exposed to on a daily basis in these major cities. Right. Now this may shock a lot of you and I, and I have to be honest with you. I, I consider myself to be a brother that has his ear to the, to the ground and I'm aware of things to a certain point, but you, you shocked me with some information recently yes. when you shared with me what's taking place in some of these inner city Seventh-day Adventist churches with the young people. Right. Um, it's unfortunate that, um, you know, when the message spreads and it goes into these inner cities and it goes into these um, neighborhoods that are pretty much infested with crime. Yeah. Um, if you er erect a church in those neighborhoods, you're gonna attract those type of people. That's right. And you're gonna attract you're gonna attract sincere believers. Yes, sir. At my church and several other churches that were in the, I would say the hood of um, Miami, Florida, you would attract sincere parents that were seeking to walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. But the kids they lived in these neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 Sister White speaks about there is. No benefits, mm. apparently, you can you can find by raising a child in, in the cities. That's right. Um, because it doesn't really matter what you teach them once they get out there. It's counteracted at That's least right. ten times. That's right. That's right. So the influence was great. It was tremendous. And you're talking about when you're coming up as a young child, you're not necessarily converted. You don't really have an experience yourself. Right. So the world is pulling on you saying, this is who you really are. And you're going and to church. And the church is saying, no, no, but 
then you start looking, all right, the young people, they're going this route, mm -hmm. and the older folks are going that, wa mm -hmm. that route. Mm -hmm. So a lot, of, a lot of us would think, well, no wonder the older folks are in church because you lived your life already and then now you mm. want to come to church and say, okay, I'll give, I'll give my life to Christ. Yes. So the young folks are saying, well, we're, we're smarter now. We're going to make better decisions. Mm. So we want to mm. hang out. We want to do this. We want to do that because mm. it's not like how it was when you were coming up. So right. we, we, we struggled hard with, um, with that. And as a matter of fact, I, I vowed to myself. I said, once I become of age, I was out of here. So, so basically, <laughs> and we're going to just call a spade a spade. Right. There were crips. Uh, we wouldn't in Miami, Florida. They don't call them crips okay. for the most part. They okay. would, they would refer to them as streets. If if I lived on, if I lived, for example, if I lived on, um, 128th Street, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we would be the 128th right. gang. If yes, I sir. lived on, um, 50th Street, we would right. be the 50th Street yes, gang. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, or sometimes they would. Then you had your west side and your east sides mm -hmm. and. And the reason why I bring this up is because a lot of, at the time when I was coming up, a lot of gang members actually was going to these, to our churches, mm -hmm. uh, whether it was... Now, I want to make sure, brothers and sisters, you understand this. This, this is like the, the, the crux of the epitome of why we gave this webinar this week. Mm -hmm. You have to truly understand what your children are getting into when they're exposed to certain elements in these cities, even in the church. Even inside the doors of God's sanctuary in the city, they are not safe. These are the things they're being exposed to and influenced by, brother. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. And in essence, um, praise God that I, I myself never made a pact with a gang. I followed, um, I would say, guys that was in gangs yeah. and ha hang out with those guys. But I, I didn't never join per se to say per se to say that I was part of this gang. Yes, here. sir. But um. Um, definitely was attracted to that lifestyle because that's yeah. what it was around. And that's if right. He was a, if he was a young black man, young black boy at the time, um, you pretty much had to show how hard you are by hanging around sure. with these guys. A lot of peer pressure involved. A lot of same, peer pressure. same thing in L.A. You know, they have the streets, yeah. the 60s and the yeah. 80s and all that. And when you're young, growing up in that environment, you're going to be, there's, there's some peer pressure to, to become, you gravitate toward that right. automatically. Right. And the age really doesn't matter. It starts as low as seven, eight, nine years old. Right. You know, and I could, uh, one of the reasons why I never joined um, fully a gang is because of the fact that my mom, she was a, she was a praying mother. She was a single Amen. mother at the time with Amen. four kids. Yes. And she would make sure that we were in the house. And Amen. I would hear the kids Friday night. They're just rumbling and playing and yelling. And mm. they're just going crazy outside. Yes. And then I'm in the house like, oh, And your mom, your mom was keeping the Sabbath <laughs> Mom's holy. Mom's like, you're, you're staying in the house. Yes, and sir. that actually helped us. But when we went to the school, mm -hmm. now we hung out with the guys and, 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 and et cetera. But um, I would look at... Um, uh, the situation in our churches too. Mm -hmm. um, the young men that was involved in these street gangs, they would come to church, and on Saturday nights, in some of these churches was the hangout spot. This is when everybody would come and hang out. They used at to have, the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. At the church, and you would have um, those no. individuals that was involved in gangs. Their friends would come out and hang out. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I remember one particular time at the church we were attending. Um, one guy and his friends, they came over and right in the parking lot of the church, they had hydraulic cars and they would, you know, yeah. make it bounce and, and, and do all of that. And in the parking lot of the church. In the parking lot of the now church. Brothers, it was that atmosphere. Brothers and sisters, I want you to make sure you're getting this. Now, I know we've seen a lot at these churches around the country in L.A. They would, there's one particular church in L.A. where... The young people, after the service at 11 o'clock was over, mm -hmm. most of the, the teenagers would walk down the street to McDonald's and actually purchase lunch mm -hmm. at McDonald's on Sabbath. Then they'd come back to the church, and they'd walk into the fellowship hall while, while, where everybody else was actually eating the fellowship lunch after church. And they'd sit there with their McDonald's lunch, and they'd sit there and they'd eat in front of everybody. And none mm -hmm. of the adults would say anything to them. Right. It was almost, it was acceptable and it was normal. Right. Uh, but from what you're sharing with us now, Brother Greg, Satan has taken it to an entirely new level as far as trying to indoctrinate these young people to him, to his side. Right, pretty much. And the peer pressure was um, really high. And those individuals that was in these churches that 
I didn't see yeah. get involved in it, in any of those activities. They had parents that was really strong, valued parents yes, in sir. the Lord. Amen. Um, they had both uh, mother and father at home, and mm -hmm. father was heavily involved, either deacon or some type of position in the church. Yeah. And they really kept that tight relationship with their kids. Right. And those kids, for the most part, I saw didn't. Um, follow the crowd Praise they the actually Lord. became leaders Praise in the, the midst Lord. of city dwelling yes sir but for the uh, mass majority of the kids sure, that's coming sure. from broken homes coming from um situations of you know fighting and 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 arguments and yeah. hostility and yes you go to church that one day on sabbath that's not enough that's right that's right <laughs> to do because the other, seven, the other six days there's, there's constant conflict it's a spiritual war right. in the way and right. we're in a war we know that right. Right. so i want to draw sister sister wani into to this uh conversation uh so you guys as we fast forward you guys met at some point what happened after that well, when I when I met her, let me uh, uh, say this before she jumps in. Okay. When I met her, I um, I was running away from the church. Okay. And I didn't want your your typical Adventist girl. I was like uh, Samson. <laughs> you know, yes, he wanted sir. to go out there and get the Philistine. And, yes, sir. And yes, sir. you know, the members of the church would say, "What well, what about the women in here?" But right. our minds was like, "No, we these women there, you know, they're covered. They're they're you, they're pure." They, yeah. they don't do anything bad. <laughs> Solomon. So in our minds, we're like, we need to go out into the world yes, sir. to hang out. And I want to be able to do certain things without having a significant other um, telling me that's wrong. Sure. And we're, we're, we're right. just being real here. You know, right. you were in the world. I was in the world. And that's right. the way it was. how we thought. That's now, how we thought. Yeah. I, I met my wife through my cousin. She said that uh, I have a friend of mine that's going through, that's, that's going um, prom. Mm -hmm. And she needs, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say need. She wanted me to take her to prom. Okay. And I was coming from a different school, and I was like, sure. Okay. And that's how we met. We ended up going to prom together, and we, we dated from there. Okay. Now, when I met my wife, ironically, the same thing that I'm running from, her mom had just become. Mm. Her mom at the time had just became a seven-day advantage. Interesting. And yeah. I was like, ah. I was like, okay, but you're not, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, so... The baby just woke up. Okay. Um, we're, we're using modern technology here. We have a, a cell phone <laughs> with a speaker phone on. It's tethered to something inside the house. And the, yes. the newborn, who is how old now? Five months. Five months. His name is baby Jaden. He, is he crying? Yeah, he's awake. Okay, he's awake. so you have to depart and go. Uh, She's going to go. We'll, we'll continue while you deal with him and take care of that. Maybe you can come back and join us with, with Jaden. Yes, yes, possibly. And yeah. she'll tell she'll tell her side of the story. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. So you guys, we again we fast forward. So you guys met. You eventually marry. Yes. And you get into the music side. You're not, not right. just just kind of just briefly touch on the fact this brother is a gifted musician. By the way, I want to all God praise to the Lord. All <laughs> praise to the Lord. Uh, but the Lord has has used decided to use you in terms of promoting or promulgating the truth yes. uh, and ministering to people through music. Right. Yes. So talk about how you got involved with different high level uh, musicians in the in the church. Okay. And I'm doing touring around the churches and yes. different things and how Satan kind of got and involved in that as well. That's bro brother <laughs> or sister cookie? cookie? <laughs> sister cookie. Sister cookie. Okay. <laughs> Not right now. Amen. Go, go, go down there. Go down. Well, um, we, um, I was attracted to music ever since I was young. My daddy, yeah. Or my dad mm -hmm. <laughs> was yes, a was a musician. Okay, he played several instruments and he was a saxophonist. All right, and um, he played in the uh, nightclubs, etc. Mm -hmm. And um, I uh, kind of picked that up from him. Okay, very early on, um, when I was when I was fairly young, maybe four, five, six. It's okay. I was uh, attracted to music and okay. I loved music. Okay, I um, started playing the drums in the church. And, you know, at the time, um, and at I, that point, you didn't know any better at that point. No, 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 no. Right. No, because we, we had them there, and I, I also loved the uh, piano, and I got involved with that. And, Amen. And how I learned, I would watch these guys play, and I would go home and practice, mm -hmm. and um, continue to practice, and I would ask them, how do you do this, how do you do that? Yeah. And then I would go home and practice, and it was practice, and I, that's how I learned to play. I never, I had teachers, but for very short period of time okay. but f for the most part most of my playing comes from 
um, playing by ear, playing by ear, and yeah. practicing. Okay. And um, I actually was growing, when I was growing up, I was saying, oh, I'm gonna use this to get into Hollywood. I, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, yes, sir. And I was like, I'm gonna be the next big time producer. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. And you know, growing up, and um, growing up in some of these neighborhoods, everybody wants to be a singer or rapper. Sure, man. And I, know. I was I know. gearing towards being a producer, and I would produce tracks for these underground artists. Mm -hmm. want to be rappers and stuff so I was like this is the life that I'm going yeah. after it because of the money and the right. glamour that it offered right right but the Lord had different plans yes he praise did the Lord that praise he did. the Lord praise the Lord, praise the Lord. so I uh, um, w me and my wife we were together some, for some time and I had lost a cousin of mine mm -hmm. which was really close to me okay and uh, it was a suicide okay and after he passed that's when I was like it's something really serious about life. Yes, sir. And, so you um, had an experience. I had an experience. Yeah. And um, I actually told my wife, I was like, we we need to get serious. Okay. We need to get serious. Okay, so that was really a turning point. That was really a turning yes. point. That was the beginning. We and many times the Lord will use that right. to get our attention. You know, we don't know right. his ways, his thoughts right. are not our thoughts. We know that. You're right. Yes, sir. And um, I uh, told her that's what we need. So I kind of... Um, pulled away from the band. Mm -hmm. I was actually playing with a band at the time and playing nightclubs, etc. Okay. And let me tell you this, I always heard that there was a there was a spiritual world also in these artists and celebrities um, when it comes to their craft and the music and, yeah. and etc. Yes sir. And the church, I remember in the church um, I would have members that would say, don't join the world, don't go play in the clubs, all mm -hmm. that is the devil, mm -hmm. and they serve spirits, they serve evil, you right. know, it's, it's more than what you think it is. Right, right. Um, the last band that I was in, it was a cover band, we, we had these two managers that came that we had hired, Yeah. and the managers was telling us, oh, how are we going to have limousines, we're going to have security, you're going to have money, you're going to have this mm -hmm. and that. And then, and through all that, they said, and also, um, you're going to need protection. So we were like, what do you need protection? Mm. And one of the managers, she was really steeped into mysticism. Okay. She practiced um, voodoo. Okay. And then she was like, we're going to have to do some, um, some behind the scenes work to get you guys to be famous, to get you guys to be... Right. Uh, for people to be attracted to your CDs. Now, let me, let, me, let me just pause and clarify. Mm-hmm. You're a Seventh Day Adventist. Yes. And you're playing music at other Seventh Day Adventist churches or Sunday churches as well. No, at that time I've left the church. Okay, okay. I, I want to make sure at that, that time, we're on the right, same right. page. Okay. When I was playing in Seventh Day Adventist churches and Sunday churches, this is before I left. Okay, the I got church. you. I want to make sure that we're all clear. Right. So you're now in the in the world, right. in a worldly band, right. and this this manager is telling you that we have to basically make a pact with the devil for you to be able to reach a certain level of success right. in the music business. Right. And we all, most of us should know that. Right. The devil controls Hollywood, controls movies, TV, and music. Right. And if you're going to attain to a certain level of success or financial gain, you have to get involved on some level with mysticism. That's it is, it's all mysticism. And you know what? When she said that, there was bells ringing in my head, and I'm like, is she really saying what I'm thinking she's saying? Mm. And one of the one of the uh, musicians that was in the band, he was kind of more like spooked out about it. Okay. And he was like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? What are you going to do? Like, who, who, why? And then she was like, yeah. don't you know that's what your major artist? And she started mm -hmm. to name names and she would say yeah. before they get on stage they have these rituals yes. and they have these things that they wear that makes people attracted to their sound, yes. attracted to their to their group, sure. attracted to their artistry. Now I'm gonna put you on I'm gonna put you on the spot, Brother Gregory, just mm -hmm. just a little bit. Do you remember any of the names that she named as far as artists? that were doing these things, these rituals or whatever, and making these deals with the underworld, so to speak, to be able to reach a certain level of success in the music business. Right, Do you right. recall any? Oh yeah, she, um, she, I know she definitely mentioned at the time, let me think, this some some years back, I want to yeah. think, who was, was popular at we're the time. We're talking about 80s, mid 80s, late, early no, no, 90s. No, 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 this is, this is, this is, 2000s. Okay, I'm, I forgot you're a little younger than I'm me. <laughs> amen, brother. Amen. I'm going back a little too far. Okay, so it's early 2000s. This is 2000s. Um, she would. She named. Uh, of course, we knew 
the uh, some of the spiritual warfare with um, just boys in the not not boys in the um, bone thugs in harmony. Okay. Oh yeah, that was obvious. Those guys. Yeah. Those was obvious. Yeah. Um, she named uh, my background is um, I want to say background my my uh, heritage is Haitian. Yes. We're from Haiti. Yes, sir. Um, and she named a couple of artists in the Haitian industry. Okay. Okay. That was doing these things okay. that we were familiar with. Okay. And she didn't really focus on specifics, but she said, this is what they do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I can't remember every single artist yeah. that she mentioned, but she, right. did, she, just, she did throw out some names. Yes, sir. She threw out some comedians also. I believe that. Threw out some comedians I believe that. and said, especially in the Haitian community, she yeah. threw out some comedians and she was like, this person, that person, etc. So when she was saying, I was like, this is true. Yeah. What they were saying to me is true. Because yeah. we, through, throughout this whole experience, we were, we were performing every night, every Friday night. Friday night. We yeah. were doing CDs, we were doing live shows, we were trying to, trying to you know, take it to the next level, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't go that route. Mm. And she came in at the right time to let us know, like, look, this is what you got to do. Yeah, this is why. You got to acknowledge the spiritual side Ooh. of things yeah. to move forward. That's serious, brothers and sisters. So Very then, serious. Uh, now, right after that, pretty much, um, another guy, he was a Protestant. He was a Baptist. Okay. He, he was like, I I'm leaving because this is not working out. And, okay. And he wanted to go back to church. Back and, to church. And when he did that, um, that's when I decided um, I, I, I need to make the same move. Praise the Lord. I need to make the same Praise move. Praise the Lord. Sometimes it takes one person and one individual stepping out, right. kind of leading the way. Right. And uh, just as an example, right, you know, right. follow Paul, Paul, follow me as I follow Christ. Right. You know, amen, brother. Amen. So now at this point, you decide to go and we're, we're, we're just laying a foundation, making our way yes. toward the whole renting. Again, this tonight, the segment, of course, we're continuing from our previous family, the Brinney family, stepping stones, leaving the city, renting on your way to your ultimate destination that the Lord wants to entrust you with. Um, and I just love this conversation because it's very compelling and I just, God gets the glory. Yes, he, he brought you from a long way, oh, brother. Yes. Oh, yes. You know, it's interesting, the whole music thing, I can recall just briefly, when I was 18 in San Francisco and I was just developing a little name for myself around the neighborhoods and doing little house parties as a, as a DJ, starting to get a little name. And I remember on Easter Sunday, it was Easter Sunday, and all, everybody at the biggest church in San Francisco, one of the biggest churches, of course, you go Sunday and Christmas, I mean, Easter and Christmas, those mm -hmm. are the two big days. But I remember uh, the preacher made an altar call. Yeah. And I was up in the balcony. I felt impressed to, to walk down and, and accept. So I walked all the way down, and all my friends there, and all the people I went to high school, where they all were there, and they saw me answer the call. So I remember after church, I'm outside, everybody's congratulating me, and you, you did it. You know, why, why yeah. did you go down there? We were so proud yeah. of you. Yeah. And this one young lady, I never forget, her name was Kim Baker, grew up in our neighborhood, and she came right to me, and she said, oh, Elvin, you, you're saved now. You can't DJ anymore. Wow. And I remember hearing her say that, and I paused, and I, I, I looked back, and I remember thinking, I hear what you're saying, and it makes sense, but she couldn't explain to me why, why? I couldn't DJ anymore. Right. What, what's the connection? Why, why is it not permissible spiritually or right. biblically for me to continue, because there was no explanation given to me, I just continued doing what I was doing. Right. And it stayed in the world for, for years until I got this beautiful message. Amen. Wow, praise so, God. So many times, we don't need to hear that it's wrong, the young right. people especially. We need to hear, what is the reason? Show me yeah. in the Bible right. why, why God does not approve of this, of this lifestyle. Right. Praise but, God. And, and you know, the, the Holy Spirit will impress it upon your heart. And um, really and truly, once a person is converted, you really don't need a... Uh, uh, another individual telling you that listening to mu certain music like rap that yeah. cuss and <coughs> talk about violence and mm -hmm. drugs, mm -hmm. you know, the spirit automatically lets you know that something right. is wrong with this. Absolutely. And um, to fast forward, mm -hmm. um, my wife, when I said, all right, we need to get, get serious, serious. I, uh, she was attending a Sunday church at the time. Okay. And, um, I started to, I visited that Sunday church with her, and they had the band, and they had the rocket, rock yeah. band going, yes, and live stage, and they dimmed the music, they <laughs> dimmed the, the, the lights, sort of, they dimmed the lights, and yeah. it was like this 
atmosphere of club like but right. church they was trying to blend like both blue, together and i was man. like man i was like wow to me at the time i'm like this is really catering to the youth yeah i need to get involved in this and right. you know me as a musician coming out from the world i'm like all right my talents need to go to the lord and mm -hmm. i need to get involved in this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it wasn't till my mom my mom she was happy that uh, me and my girlfriend she was at the time mm -hmm. was taking our walk serious yeah. she was like but what are you doing at the sunday churches mm. now growing up i had never as far as i could remember here the mark of the bees sunday law i had okay. never heard these things okay so okay. when she said that now, I, was, wait, I, I gotta i gotta pause go ahead so again you're second generation yes. seventh day adventist yes raised in the church mm -hmm. Never heard of the Mark of the Beast. Mm -mm. Never heard of National Sunday Law. Mm -hmm. Never heard these things taught in the church you were attending every week with your parents, with your, right. with your mom. Right. That's astounding. Right. But again, we shouldn't be shocked. Right. Because it's a result of the omega of apostasy. Right. So it's not you would being hear, taught. When you would hear folks talk about, I would say at the time, the older folks talk about the apocalypse and uh, revelation, they yeah. would m mainly say that the mark of the beast is a chip they're going to put in your hand yeah. or a chip in your forehead yeah. so we was like okay the mark of the beast is a chip just mm. look out for the chip yeah. but <laughs> never was it emphasized that it had to do with worship that's right so wow i didn't hear this message i didn't know i didn't even know that the sabbath was in the bible as such i knew the ten commandments yes sir but the uh, other scriptures that speaks of Jesus Christ the Lord of the Sabbath the Sabbath was here in the beginning the Sabbath is going to be in heaven the Sabbath the disciples kept it right. um, Abraham kept his laws and his statutes all of these mm. I didn't mm. know of them yeah because I wasn't studying of course yes, and I, I didn't I don't remember at any time the church really driving home right those teachings for the most part yeah that's amazing brother and so basically it's almost like a pseudo relationship with Jesus you're not right. being taught the whole truth really right. hardly any of the truth right. the third angel's message wasn't being promulgated in the right. church and right. this is not just a hearsay right. this is from the horse's mouth right. and I can right. say the same thing right. when I first came into the church nobody talked about health nobody talked about leaving the city nobody talked about righteousness by faith it wasn't right. being discussed at all right so let's fast forward now you guys are now more serious now you're, you're in serious. the church right you're, you're now you're married Right. You have you have a few children. Right. And what what I wanted to add, when my mom said what she said, what am I doing in the Sunday church? Mm -hmm. I said, I didn't like what she said. Mm -hmm. So I said to myself, I said, okay, well, I need to um, need to speak to my uh, fiance at the time. I need okay. to speak to her and say, yeah. we really have to take this serious because I want to be able to point to the scriptures yes. and show people. But at the time, I'm saying people like my mom, mm -hmm. why we do what we do mm -hmm. if we're going to do go to church on Sunday, etc. Exactly. And I said, let's do that. Let's, whatever we do as far as our belief, be founded on the scriptures. Right. And I was sincerely saying that, knowing that all we need to do is find the support for what we're doing. Yes, sir. And that started our quest for studying. Amen. And we, we never found it. And as a result of that, my wife, she left the Sunday church. Um, her sister, her brother, okay. her friend, several, it was a whole group of them that was attending that church. Okay. They all pretty much left after they found out that there was no support in the scriptures wow. for Sunday worship. And it was actually um, Praise God. pagan worship that came down from the Catholic church. Praise God, brother. And then we came into that and we, we joined the seven Praise God. Faith. Praise God. Now I'm going to ask our sister if she could rejoin us. Is the baby okay? Okay, you're gonna you're gonna stay where you are for now. You oh, want it okay, go cookie, go. Now, cookie, sister, go. we can go, introduce go, go, sister go, go. Janaya. Okay. No, not yet. Okay. Um, let's see. We got to get somebody to get to get cookie. But we'll just keep rolling. We'll have Janaya come again. Okay. Okay. Janaya, come get cookie. That's a loyal dog. Wants to stay next to her master. All Say right. hi, Janiah. This is Janiah Gregory. This is the, the daughter. And she's how old? 
13. Amen, 13. And we're going to talk about the transition in a few minutes of yes. the young ones, because you have a family of, of four children now. Yes. Of course, the baby doesn't doesn't really count. He's, he's kind of along for the ride <laughs> at his age. But right. we really want to talk about the change for them and how the difference in environment has made a difference in their relationship with the Lord and with each other as a family unit. It's very, very important. Right. So Sister Wani is going to join us with the baby. And he's wide awake, too. Young baby Jaden. <laughs> Amen. And Sister Gigi. Praise the Lord. So we fast forward to Sister now. We're, we're to the point now where you guys are married. You're getting a little more serious now about your relationship and your walk with the Lord. Okay. And we, But you're not, you're not quite present truth mm -hmm. yet, so, right. so to speak. Right. What was the turning point? What did you see? What did you hear? What, how did God reveal things to you about a message that you might not have heard, you know, initially when you started to get, to get more serious about it? So I'll let her pick up to... Um, I'm not sure. Did you tell them about the Bible studies? That's where I'm going to let you pick up. I'm right after my mom said what she said, and I said we need to find scripture for support for what we, what we were believing and what we were doing. Yeah. Okay, okay. Can you get a little closer, my sister? Sure. Praise the Lord. I appreciate that. I want to make sure we're all in the frame and we can be heard. Amen. All right. Okay. So pretty much after, um, after we went on the quest, uh -huh. we started trying to figure out through the Bible and um, praying what it is that God desires for us to do when it comes to the Sabbath yes. or for church. <coughs> and... Um, my sisters found out about this Bible study that was going on every Tuesday night. Okay. And they came to me and they were like, we found out about the truth, about the Sabbath, this Bible study. And he explains it um, line upon line in the scriptures, how we're supposed to keep the Sabbath. And at first I was like, I kind of didn't want them. <laughs> <laughs> she was a little because discouraged. I, she liked her church. I, like, okay. I really yeah. like my church, even though I found out, because they used to have Sabbath morning prayer. Right. Okay. And I kind of like it because I was growing, you know? Yeah. yeah. I was sincerely wrong, but yeah. I felt comfortable where I was. So you're, and you're saying, just to clarify, the church you were attending wasn't quite keeping the Sabbath no. properly. No, it was a Sunday church. Right. Oh. Pentecostal. Well, that goes without right. saying. Yeah. Okay. It was a Sunday church. So you were convicted on the Sabbath issue through this Bible study. Yes. Praise she God. just wasn't started, happy about the conviction. When I, I attended understand. the Bible study, I finally, me and my husband were like, okay, let's go. We were married at the time. Were we married yet? No. No, we were married at the time. And we were like, okay, let's go check it out. And from that point, we were hooked. You're right. We've right. never okay. seen anyone break it down to us from the Bible, line upon line, mm. not like, um, oh, you're supposed to do this, you're supposed to do that. Right. No, right. Let the, he Evidence. let the Bible yes. explain itself. Yes. And we were convicted from there. And, and I was thinking all this time, I was running from, in essence, the truth. We were right all along, not us per se, but right. the faith that I was, my mom had join fairly young was right all along mm -hmm. and we were mm -hmm. I was very very refreshed to hear that so you came full circle full circle full circle running from the Lord but the Lord brought you all the way back yeah in a way you didn't even really expect to happen either. no isn't no. that something that's no. why I love Jesus he, yes. it never happens the way <laughs> yes. we expect but that's the way he has to do it to get our attention Praise God. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. now you're you're back. You're in the Seventh Day yeah. Adventist Church. Mm -hmm. You're going to church every Sabbath now, yes. but you still aren't aware of the full Three Angels messages. Not quite yet. Not quite. Okay, yet. let's please please expound on that a little bit. So fast forward. Um, my wife, she got involved in the present truth. She started being somebody a friend of hers invited her to the meetings she started going to jeremiah davis i okay. believe it was okay uh, um who was the other one uh, christopher, christopher hudson Dwayne lemon okay amen. and um amen. she get, she became convicted of country living and homeschooling the kids amen and at the time i was like no way we're not doing that hmm. <laughs> god didn't call us to go way out there and that's an extreme um, side of the faith. That's yeah. the radical side of the faith. I was right. like, we're not doing that. Mm. We're gonna go live uh, uh, out west with the uh, middle class folks. That's our okay. dream. We're gonna get our careers. We're gonna go get the two story mm. house oh, and yeah. the picket the fence. Picket fi yeah, fence two car garage. You know, two car garage. That's, That's right. correct. Starbucks, the American dream. Starbucks around the corner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, it wasn't until 
we got an invitation to go and see Brother Mason mm -hmm. at uh, the meeting he was doing. Okay. And when I went in, there in Florida, in Florida, this right. was in um, this was in Plantation, Florida. Okay. Not too far from Miami, about maybe 20 minutes away, 30 minutes yes, from sir. Miami. Yes, sir. And when I walked into that meeting, and I heard some of the things he was expounding upon, expounding upon um, the signs of the times, yeah. where we are in the stream of time, mm -hmm. spirit of prophecy. Um, I had never heard it in that sense, to that depth, okay. so to speak. Now, what year and was this? 2014. 2014. Okay, so fairly recent history. Fairly recent. Okay. And when I heard that, I was like, wow, mm. this is serious. Yes, so sir. That's when I humbled myself and, and he spoke on, of course, the situations in the cities and mm -hmm. the schools and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. country living and et cetera. And so we went back and we researched. Okay. Red country living. Amen. Started looking at this. I looked at my life and how growing up in the city, nothing around attracted me to the message. Mm -hmm. And I was putting two and two together. And I was like, this is this is the word of the Lord. Amen. This is his word. And we started reading, researching. And we after reading country living, we was like, she is too direct. Mm -hmm. The message is too direct. It, it has to be either she's nuts or this is the word of the Lord. Amen, brother. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yes. And we found it to be the word of the Lord and we prayed upon it and okay. we that started our journey into the country. Okay. So sometimes it takes hearing the right message from the right person at the right time the right way. The right way. And that's what happened in this case with, with Elder Mason. Yes. Yes. Okay. And that, that I found that to be my experience many times. You know, right. the Lord will use right. a little child. Right. In the children's, during the children's story. Wow. I've, 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 that I've experienced that. I've personally experienced that where a young child was praying at the end and the child was saying, you know, and my mommy and my daddy and thank you for my grandpa and blah, right. blah, blah. And don't do blankety blank, blankety blank. Right. And it was exactly what I was struggling with. Right. So the Lord will speak through anybody he has to speak to to get your attention. Amen. Amen. And I'm a testimony of that. Well, Amen. Let me just add this one point on my wife's side of the family. When I met her, just her mom had just become seven advantage. Okay. Today, her mom, her dad, her sisters, her brother, everybody, for the most part, the whole family now is, is in this message. Praise and God. We praise the praise Lord, the for Lord that. brother. <laughs> now, let me share with you all how he and I met. Yes. Uh, I've been in the country at this point about two and a half years, maybe a little longer. And uh, it was one day my son and I were driving in a little town, not far from here. And we had to go to Home Depot. I think I had to go and return something. Yeah, yeah I think I went to return something at, uh -huh. a home, at the Home Depot. This was maybe, was earlier this year, right? Earlier maybe this year, eight months March, ago. April. Yeah, April. seven, eight, yeah. You, and you had just we moved just to the country. Moved. Ah, yes, yeah. okay. Yeah. Maybe I should let you speak and lead up to that to that point. Okay, you can do that. Yeah. Well, I've been doing a lot of talking. My wife needs to say something. <laughs> please, sister, please. Okay, the well, sisters need to hear your perspective. Yes, it's important. Yes. Okay, well, Josh to get into... his tongue at me. Okay, oh, all right. Joshua, don't you do that. Amen. Children in the country. Children in the amen, country. Amen, They amen. have enough kids to play with. And we live right next door to them, and, and um, that's our son Joshua up there. Probably can't see him. Praise the Lord. And but by the way, I want to mention this. By the way, we can get to that in a minute. I don't want yes. to get to the car before the horse. Right. But uh, <laughs> so you guys, yes. what, what got to the point? How did you get to the point where you actually were able to, to what, what was the final, I guess, link in you propelling yourselves, or the Lord propelling you guys to the country? Okay, well, we prayed about it for two years. We wow. were praying. Amen. We remember hearing a sermon where you were like, um, well, this is what I always said. I was like, you said, pack and pray, don't delay. So we need to pack yes. and pray, don't delay. So I kept saying that all the time, and we had our everything packed up. I wanna, we, why are you talking? I'm going to fix this. We downgraded like to, to get rid of a lot of our big stuff, and yes. um, we were praying and saying, Lord, just open up the door, and we'll walk right through it. And we were ready to go, Leave it like that. trying to figure out where exactly he That's wanted good. us to go, when he wanted Amen. us to go. And so, we did that pretty much for two years. A lot of times when we um, tried to go through a door, he would shut it because we prayed, Lord, if it's not your will, yes. please shut the door. And a lot of things that we tried, a lot of places that we tried at the beginning, 
he closed the door. So yes. it was like, praise God. And we were looking towards the north part of the, the United States. We were really looking towards the south. Were you? Really? Yeah, we were not looking towards the south. We were trying to look towards, you know, Iowa, Idaho, those areas ah. and stuff like that. And it wasn't until a friend of mine who lived in Tennessee um, told us about this school because we were packed and prayed, but we didn't have the funds. So we had to go by faith. Lord, you have to provide a way for us That's to leave. That's right. That's right. We couldn't do it on our own. So he had to move us. Yes. And she told us about this school and she was like, they're hiring. It's up in Tennessee. I was like, well, that's not where we really were trying to go, but we'll pray about it. If mm -hmm. it's God's will, he'll open up the door. Mm -hmm. And so we prayed about it and contact the, the um, principal, the president of the school. And um, um, the Lord opened up the door where he brought us up take a look at the school he was okay. interested in my husband as being a maintenance man and everything and it was like okay okay the Lord's open the door, the Lord's the Lord. the door. Yeah. then after that door shut mm. <laughs> they okay. were like what was that all about it's not until we prayed and we're like Lord what happened we thought that this was our door open for us to leave uh -huh. our way yes. out yes and he let us know that was not where I wanted you to be but this mm. is what I used to let you know that this state is where I want you to go. Interesting. So Interesting. this happened like uh, in July last year. Okay. And it wasn't until um, March that he opened up the door for us to leave. Praise because God. Because we were still waiting. Okay, Lord, so this is where you want us to go. When? When shall we go? Yes. And when he finally opened up the door, will I make it clear? Let us know exactly when you want us to leave. He opened up the door in March. We packed up all of our stuff and we moved. We didn't have a job ready. We didn't have a home ready or anything like that. Wow. He just said, go. And we packed up everything, and we took our children, and we left. And the oh. next day, the next day after we got here, he provided a job for him. Yes. And we ended up having a place to stay. Awesome. Now, <laughs> awesome. We're, that's going to lead us up to yes to where, where you were talking about. Um, so start today, don't delay packing. I, I I don't take that lightly. That's very <laughs> serious, and that's right. how we showed the Lord. And I'll give my testimony on many occasions. Right. Yes. This is when the Lord. You're showing the Lord that you mean business. Right. Yes. You're serious. Right. And serious. then he gets more serious. Oh, yes. okay. They're moving on faith now. Yes. It, it take, the, the, the Lord speaking now. It takes yeah. faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please me. Yes. The Lord says, now I can start working on their behalf. Because yes. they are serious yes. about yes. getting out of the city. Yes. Yes, ma'am. And we, when, um, we started praying. And immediately after that meeting, Elder Mason came down to Florida to do. I started following the channel, following the ministry. And that's how we found out about your ministry Praise and God. I used to watch the uh, prophecy updates periodically and every Friday when it was available and, Praise God. and I was like wow these brothers are doing the work of the Lord <laughs> to God be the glory, it, was a, it was so amazing I looked forward for that to God be the glory. those meetings and um, um, when we moved up here we I had said to my wife when we get to Tennessee I knew that Elder Mason was in Tennessee so mm -hmm. you guys were in Tennessee mm -hmm. I didn't know where mm -hmm. I say one Sabbath, we're going to visit Apocalypse Ministry, Live in Manor, go hang out with them one Sabbath, spend a Sabbath with them. Amen. If they're having a meeting, we'll, we'll go do that because we didn't know how far you guys was going to be. Right, right. So we move up here and um, my brother in Christ was saying, hey, the guys that I told you about because there was a building project that was happening, which was the new media center. Yes, sir. With Elder Mason. Right. He said, the, the, the brothers that I told you about, they're waiting on you. And this was early in the, in the process of building. This right, was, right. I think at this point... Well, the was framing the, was up. Right. And, but n n for the most part, the exterior walls was up. Yes, yes. And um, I said, okay, cool. They say, do you want to... Are you ready to work? As soon as I got here, I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, went, I went to the, uh, to the site. And when I got there, I was shocked. Hmm. Why was I shocked? Providence, brother. When Providence. I looked on the door, I saw it said Apocalypse Ministry. I was like, no way. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's something else. I was like, this That's is something. not the Apocalypse. I was, so uh, my sister in Christ, I asked her, who is that? She said, this is uh, Elder Mason. You know him, right? I was like, yeah. no way. That's I was floored. Of all the millions right. of places you could have been <laughs> called or drawn to to do some carpentry work or whatever the work you were doing. Right. I think you started out doing tile or whatever. Right, right. Of all the places on earth, the first place you got work when you came to the country was at Apocalypse. Oh, That's praise amazing. the Lord. I was shocked. That's amazing. I was excited to meet Brother Mason. when I, I didn't see him that day, but the next day when I saw him, I think it was the following week, he was out of town. When he yeah. came, I was, Brother yeah. Mason, just want to let you know I praise God for you. Praise and I was letting him know we follow your ministry. And So it's almost yeah. like 
the Lord brought you full circle again. Full circle. Because you you uh, you were at one of his meetings right. in Florida, right? Which is really where you first got a right. taste of right. present truth per se, say, right. per se, and also leaving the city. Now, believe it or not, my heart's desire desire was that he would put us around apocalypse. I used to look at these guys, um, you guys, and I would say, man, it would be amazing to be around these brothers in the country, but I wouldn't. Presumptuous, you know. Right, right. Try to yeah, push ourselves let, let, that let way because it has lead. to be the Lord's the, will. Yes, always. We can have always. our desires, but it has to be His will. Yes. So I kind of brushed that out. Right. I was like, Lord, wherever you want us to go, we'll right. go. And He shocked us, and He further exceeded our expectation. Yes, sir. I'm gonna fix this while you're talking because this yes. has to be right. Of course, this is live TV. We can always edit this. We yeah. have to. That's good. Okay. So, so now, so Home Depot. Now I'm up here, and it's right. been a few weeks. Right. And I'm seeing everybody. I'm meeting everybody. Yes, but sir. there's one person in my mind. That I'm like, I haven't seen yet. I'm yes, like, sir. where is uh, the Bridges? Where is he? <laughs> so I haven't asked anybody for you because of the fact that we just gotten here. Right. Right. So um, I'm at Home Depot. I had to go to Home Depot to buy a tool or et cetera. I can't remember exactly what it was I purchased that day. Okay. And on my way out, coming out of the double doors, here is Elder Bridges yes. with his son yes. standing in front of his truck. And yes. I, I had to do a double take. I said, is that him? Yes. I'm like, that is him. To God be the glory. Now, I, I remember that night. I remember we, we had to go. I was on my way somewhere else. I, actually, I was on my way, I think, out here. Uh-huh. And but we had to go by Home Depot first to, right. to return something. We're doing some work at the house, right. some some very serious work. And so I said, we will swing by Home Depot. We had to park in the in the uh, the waiting area for the right. trucks, you know, yeah. for the lumber area. Right. We just happened to park at, in that spot at that moment when I opened the door and I saw you walk out. Of course, yeah. I didn't know who you were. Yeah. And I opened my door. I got out, and this brother standing right in front of me said, "Brother Bridges." <laughs> <laughs> and I said, do, do I know this brother? But well, the brother was, 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 was right, I, I, I knew right away he was a believer. Yeah, I knew right yeah, away. Yeah. The, 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 the light was shining. Oh, Praise yeah, the Lord, yeah. brother. Praise the light was shining. That. Yeah, I, um, I was, uh, when I saw that, I was saying, uh, I was like, man, Brother Bridges, the Apocalypse Ministry, I was saying, hey, I saw your Amen. updates and, and prophecy updates and stuff, and I was telling you yes, exactly. Sir. Um, and I remember you well, told me you had, you had just left the city, yes. and you said Miami. I said, oh, Miami, man, man I know you are glad to be out. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Serious, oh, yeah. We know. were in the heart of it. We knew, we knew that um, to raise our children in the fear and admonition of the Lord was yeah. going to be a challenging one yes, sir. in the city. Right, and right. so we um, were praying, Lord, we are making ourselves available to you mm -hmm. that you would lead us out because it's, it's, it is your will. That's right. We wanted them to have a different experience than we did. Yeah. And um, we, we were praying and was like, Lord, we want to do this before they become a certain age where they, they're accustomed mm -hmm. to this mm -hmm. lifestyle. Amen, brother. And it becomes a harder <laughs> task on them and, and on us. And I want to discuss the, the children now. It's yes. very important we, we, we kind of elaborate on this. And I also want to say, I'm not condemning every single human being in Miami or any right. other city. Right. God has sheep everywhere. Yes, yes. And there's going to be many, many sheep coming out of Miami yes. and, and, and Pittsburgh yes. and Philly and New York and, and, and we LA know, and everywhere. And we know some faithful Daniels and the three, he three Hebrew boys. We know some faithful ones yes. down there in Miami. Yes. In the heart of it, in the heart of it all, mm -hmm. and they're standing for the Lord. Praise we God. do know that also. Praise God. Yes. But God, for his remnant church, he yes. has a special work for us to do. Right. And we have to be reflecting the character of Christ fully right. before he comes to claim us as his own. We're told yes. that, of course, in inspiration. Yes. So in order to be able to reflect his character fully, we got to be in an environment where we give the Holy Spirit the best opportunity to do that. And Amen. that's being away from all distractions. Amen. Remember, we're, we're told that John the Baptist in the wilderness, there were no zero no distractions that would interrupt Amen. or take away his communion time with God. And None. He's, a type. he's the type of the last day Christians right That's before right, brother. Christ Elijah, comes. brother. Amen. The second <laughs> Elijah. So, okay, so the children. Now, he wasn't here. No. He wasn't here yet when you got here. No. But my, my, my young sister here was here. She was, mm -hmm. of course, more of a baby. She's two. Mm -hmm. And, of course, brother Joshua and sister Janiah. Okay. 
I'm really particularly looking at or asking you about Janiyah because she's a little older. How is she now? Thirteen. Okay, so see, that's that's really that's critical. That's yeah. critical. Yes. How has been the transition for her? Would you say it's been? Uh, well, just tell us. Talk to us. Well, when um, we started teaching and talking about country living um, for some years now, and she was all for it. She was all for it. Wow. Um, in the beginning, very, very um, upbeat and positive up, about upbeat it. And positive, and she understood the spiritual natures and stuff. Praise and, the Lord. That's a testimony yeah. to, to yeah. you guys, you know, yeah. as far as, the, oh, that's beautiful, brother. Right. And, um, of course, we're out here now, and she, of course, she has friends and family members that yeah. she she's really close to mm -hmm. um, back home. But you know what? This new era of social media and and this uh, era of being able to connect with your loved ones, right? Like it, it, it's it's in a, it's in a different um, we're in a different time than before. Absolutely. So that connection, she kind of. It, it was never severed. You right, know, it's kind of still right. there. And um, with Skype and all this right, stuff, you can talk right. to people face to face every day if you want. Right. Yeah. And she's been she's been as far as I could tell, very positive about it. And Praise God. Beautiful um, personality towards it. Yes, sir. You want? Yeah. yeah. She has a very gentle spirit. Very I, I gentle appreciate spirit, that. Right. Yeah. She was a little sad. When yeah, yeah. First left. And that's right. normal. Which is yeah. which is normal. Yeah, sure. because of friends and family that. and stuff. Yeah. Sure. Seeing them yeah. every day. But she understands why mommy and daddy made this move. Amen. And the purpose of it. And Amen. Understand now Joshua was a little younger. How old is he? He's eight. Okay. Now how about him? He was very excited. Oh yeah. He Praise saw the God. field and it was over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a park. A big old park. Yeah. Oh, that's man. nice. Oh yeah. yes. He's lo He's loving it. Yeah. So I guess you could say, and we discussed this with the Brinney family earlier, uh, in another state. Mm -hmm. And again, every family is different. Yes. They decided they wanted to be a little private that's with it for right. their own personal reasons. Right. Um, but they, we all agree that, of course, the younger the child is, the easier the, the easier transition. Yes. yes. Yeah, the yes. easier transition. Yes. Okay. And you're blessed with a situation here, mm -hmm. just like, and we didn't mention this with the Brinney family, uh, you're renting from a Seventh-day Adventist family. Right. Yes. Which Praise is the Lord. Praise the Lord. Great circumstances. Now, that's a testimony in and of itself. So, just like the Brinney family, their circumstances were a little different. Yes. <clears throat> They're renting from an Adventist family as well. Yes. Their scenario is kind of different. They're, that that family actually has left the country, mm -hmm. and they're going to be gone for a few years. Mm -hmm. So it, the situation opened up a little different for them. Yes. Um, we won't have a chance during this webinar to talk about the flip side. Mm -hmm. Renting from a non-Adventist family brings some other issues, yes. other maybe potential challenges, but also blessings. Yes. You know, I love, uh, I mentioned uh, second selected messages, actually one selected messages, page 128, second paragraph. Sister White talks about, and I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, uh, the Gentiles, using the Gentiles to be able to forward God's work. And the Lord will do that. Mm -hmm. And we've seen that in our own experience in the country. He will, brother, he will bring them from out of the woodworks. The rich is storing up treasures for the saints. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Absolutely so, brother. They're yes. storing it up for the yes. saints. And he will use them and their resources to benefit his he children will. He will. in Amen. the last days. Praise Amen. God for it. Praise God. So your kids have, they've, they've made the transition. Mm -hmm. They're obviously very happy. Yes. They have other children to play with on the property. Yes. Um, plenty of space to run around and roam around. Yes. And uh, they, they seem like a very well-adjusted uh, set of children. I'm, yes. I know God we, is we just, you praise God There's no that. way that we could uh, thank the Lord. Amen. It's, it's just too much is overwhelming. So yes, we sir. praise Him for that. Amen. And we're praying that... Um, some more of our friends and families that are praying to leave that mm -hmm. he would open a door for them to do so Amen. and it would work out according to his glory yes sir yes. absolutely so praise god why don't we brothers and sisters close with i was about to ask if there's any questions but you know nobody's here but the camera why don't we close with a prayer and <laughs> yes. give god all the praise amen. 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 amen amen sister Gigi, you want to join us for prayer Gigi, come come baby let's pray okay okay heavenly father we thank you, dear Lord, for the opportunity, of course, and privilege of prayer. Mm -hmm. Lord, I believe your name has been glorified and lifted up this evening. You have opened up a door for these two families, Lord, where they're able to go step by step to the country. You've given them a transition uh, point here by, uh, by renting, and you've blessed them to be able to rent from an Adventist family. We just thank and honor and glorify your name. We continue to pray for those who are still in the city. They're looking for a way out. We know, Lord, you have a thousand, even yay, a million, a zillion, a trillion different mm -hmm. ways 
to take them from where they are to where they need to be yes. to help to finish this work and close the gospel. We thank you in advance for answering the prayer, each and every prayer of those families. We pray that you would bless them, lead them, and guide them, Lord, and reinforce and increase their faith. It's all about faith. It is yes. a total faith walk, leaving yes. all you've known to go somewhere you've never been. Yes. But we have to trust and believe in Jesus to take us there and to sustain us once we get there. We thank you, Father. We love you so much. And we thank you for hearing this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen, my brother. So like I, I promised earlier, we're introducing the entire family now. Brother uh, Gregory is on the camera. So he's already been introduced. This is young sister Janaya, the 13 year old. This is young brother Jaden, and he's how old? Five months. Okay. This is, we, we introduced Gigi earlier, and this is brother Joshua. Brother Joshua is how old? Eight. Eight years old, amen. <laughs>
Thank you.